Okay guys, I just wanted to take you over a bit of a revision of um, source analysis, um, in particular political cartoons, so just a bit of a revision of that. Okay, I'm going to share with you a sample here of a cartoon that we haven't seen, um, about a topic that we haven't uh, got onto yet, um, but it'd be a good practice for us. Um, so the cartoon that you will have in the exam will of course be different from this. Okay, but um, we start off by first viewing the cartoon and just seeing what we see without trying to get too deep into explaining what it's about. And you can see here, okay, that, okay, I'm just going to grab a, a pointer. Okay, we can see that um, it's a what appears to be an Asian man and we can presume that we're going to be because of the context that this is a Japanese man okay we can see that he appears to be in a lot of pain okay the hands are wiry and looks unhealthy and he's wearing military boots and without full color we can probably presume then that it's a military uniform however on this uniform there's a rather bloated torso and on that torso is an image of the rising sun flag and we've got some missiles or bombs falling and some planes off in the sky and the title is Jappy Ending so that's a little bit of a play on words okay the context of this is that it was a cartoon from 1945 in the Tribune newspaper and the cartoonist was uh, William Gropler. Okay, the image on the torso as we've said represents the rising sun flag which was the military flag of Japan. Okay, so the national flag of Japan has just simply the sun in the middle of a white flag whereas the military flag also had the rays on it too. So just in case you ever see the two and you're wondering which they are, this is the military flag. Okay, to be able to analyse properly, we like to do the three C's, content, context and comment. Okay, and what we first do is we ask ourselves what's happening in the cartoon. Let's just do that surface level, describe what's going on. We can see that there's a set of man wearing a military uniform. Apologies for the bad spelling there. Oh. Um, he's got the rising sun motif and he's lying screaming on the ground as bombs are falling which appeared to be targeted right on the flag and we've got high flying bombers appearing in the distance. So what's happening at the time and what's the historical context? So this was done in 1945 and was done after the dropping of the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So two atomic atomic bombs had just been dropped on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The Japanese military leadership had obstinately refused to surrender despite the overwhelming strength of the Allied pressure on Japan. Okay, so what had happened was from where we've left off with the Battle in Kokoda was that over the space of 19, uh, for the end of 1942 um, through 43 and 44 was that the uh, the Allies advanced doing that island hopping strategy that we'd mentioned in class until they reached the point where they had all but defeated the Japanese military um, who had retreated to the home islands of Japan. But the Allied leadership decided that a land-based invasion of the Japanese nation would have resulted in massive casualties. Like in the scale of hundreds of thousands if not even millions on both sides and so they engaged in a long-range bombing campaign so military technology had advanced to the point where with the the B-29 bomber now they could uh, bomb Japan relentlessly um, from long distance from bases that they had out in the Pacific Islands and they'd been doing this for several months and the Japanese had refused to surrender until eventually one bomb dropped on Hiroshima, um, still nothing from the Japanese leadership and then after the Nagasaki bombing then the Japanese surrendered. So what's the perspective then of the cartoonists and what are they trying to say and, and how can we assess the accuracy of the cartoon? So 
if we look at the context a bit, the Tribune newspaper was the official newspaper of the Communist Party in Australia, and therefore they're not necessarily going to toe the uh, the standard line of the, of the Australian government. So whilst it was a Labor Party government at the time, which have its links to um, to the Communist Party, um, they the Tribune would be used to often telling the alternative story. So the closest thing, the equivalent of the Tribune today is um, the Guardian newspaper. So the Guardian is like the modern manifestation of the Tribune. And there's some suggestion here that there's a like a sense of overkill in the number of bombs. You know, if we if we look here, probably this bomb alone should do the job, but that's not going to be the only one. There's all these others yet to come, and all these multitude of airplanes. Okay. Also, the distance that the planes are away suggests a disconnect that the uh, those making the decisions to uh, to bomb Japan are far far away, and they don't have to actually face their enemy. But is this accurate? Um, yes, we know that this strategy was what appears to have forced Japan into surrendering. So we say that that is the Jappy ending. So not quite a happy ending, but a happy ending, happy ending given what Japan almost forced the Allies into doing. Okay, so how might we sort of take that a little bit further and sort of break this down a little bit? When so this is another another level of analysis we could we could say. Um, so we can see Goppler's motivation was feeling that Japan was an evil enemy. So we can tell by the way he portrays the image of uh, the Japanese man, not necessarily meant to feel sorry for him, but um, you know because they're grotesque looking, overweight. Okay, and he's grown fat, but only total annihila annihilation is what's going to be acceptable. Um, what appears to be Groppler's attitude? He seems enthusiastic about finally destroying Japan. So how does he convey this attitude? We have to break this down a little bit more. So using body language, cartoonists have drawn Japan in a way as to not evoke any sympathy. Okay, they're lying down. You know, Japan has been knocked off its feet already. Japan is represented as grotesque. You know, a monster breathing fire or smoke. Okay, Japan is wearing hobnail boots, which suggests that they've stamped over others. That's one way to look at it. Okay, and um, some of the symbols, the falling bombs, demonstrate the precision of the Allied bombs. So, you know, that's another way to look at it as well. Now, in your in your answer in in the exam, you, you're not required to. Um, to write out this level of analysis, but this is just describing the the process that you go through with the analysis. Okay, the question won't won't necessarily ask you to say these things, but this level of understanding will help you answer the question the way that they say it. So let's look at another type of source, though, just while we're at it. Um, so this one's not a cartoon, but this is a regular um, text-based source. Okay, and this one. Is a petition that was presented to the United, the President of the United States in 1945. Okay, again, this is one that's not related to what we're doing in the assessment, but just gives us an example of how we might do it. So we, the undersigned scientists, have been working in the field of atomic power. Until recently, we have had to fear the United States might. Sorry, we have had the fear that the United States might be attacked by atomic bombs during this war, and that only defence. Her only defence might align a counter-attack. Today, with the f defeat of Germany, the danger is averted and we feel impelled to say what follows. The war has been brought speedily to a successful conclusion and attacks by atomic bombs may very well be an effective method of warfare. We feel, however, however is an important word, that such attacks on Japan could not be justified. Okay, and at least not until the terms which will be imposed after the war on Japan were made public in detail and Japan are given an opportunity to surrender. The development of atomic power will provide the nations with new means of destruction. The atomic bombs at our disposal represent only the first step in this direction and there is almost no limit to the destructive power with which will become available in the course of the future development. Thus, a nation which sets the precedent of using only these newly liberated forces of nature for purposes of destruction may have to bear the responsibility of opening the door to an era of devastation on an unimaginable scale. If after this war a situation is allowed to develop in the world which permits rival powers 
to be in uncontrolled possession of these new means of destruction, the cities of the United States, as well as the cities of other nations, will be in continuous danger of sudden annihilation. All the resources of the United States, moral and material, may have to be mobilised to prevent the advent of such a world situation. Its prevention is, at present, the solemn responsibility of the United States, singled out by virtue of her lead in the field of atomic power. Okay, and this was signed by Leo Silzard, plus 69 signatories. So this was a, um, a petition to the President of the United States, signed by um, 70 um, atomic scientists, okay, who were involved in what was called the Manhattan Project. And this was the research and development project that developed the first atomic bomb. Okay, so how might we analyse that then? So we talk about what sort of source it is, what its origin is, what's the purpose, and what's the context. So it's a primary source because it is the petition. It is the text of the peti petition. What origin is it? It's the Manhattan Project scientists. They were scientists who created the bomb. If anybody would understand its power and capabilities, it would be them. This enhances the reliability of the source. What's the purpose? They're petitioning the US president to be morally aware of the consequences of using the bomb. Do they want him to use it? No, they don't. They said, up until now it seemed like we needed to, but now we don't. They're seeking to influence the actions of the president and they want to persuade him. Whilst the source is a reliable representation of the scientists' views, the petition seeks to persuade, therefore its reliability is compromised. So whilst we might agree with this source, we need to know that its reliability is on shaky ground because they have a, an agenda. So the context is, from 1942 onwards, the Allies conducted a major research project to develop a nuclear device. It was called the Manhattan Project. The scientists who worked on that project fully understood the true power of a device, and when it became clear the United States might use it on Japan, the scientists wrote a letter to the President outlining why they thought it shouldn't be used. Okay, and then that might would boil down then into a paragraph. So we could say the war dragged on for so long with so much damage that ended it quickly. That ending it quickly is the only option. The atomic bomb was the only way of ensuring it ended quickly. Source 1 suggests how much of a monster Japan was as far as general opinion was concerned and that people would not have accepted anything less than the total defeat of Japan, even though the scientists in Source 2 outlined the possible dangers of such a forceful weapon in the future, it was not an effective argument at the time. The scientists admit that there was a real danger of some other power achieving nuclear power first and so a preemptive strike might be practical. They also admit that a speedy end to the war might only be achieved by using a nuclear weapon. So that's one angle. You might go the other way, which says using the atomic bomb to end the war in the Pacific was not necessary. So this is the opposite view. Even though, so that's what we call a concessive clause, even though Source 1 promotes the idea that total destruction of Japan was the only solution, that p the solution that people would accept, it does not provide evidence that dropping an atomic bomb was the only solution. Public opinion, which the cartoonist seems to be reflecting, does not justify such a horrendous solution. The scientists from Source 2 make it very clear that such a way of achieving a speedy end to the war was not worth the future threat to humans throughout the globe. They set out the possible horrendous consequences of such a response and having worked on the developments of the bomb, they're in a better position to know this than anyone else. Okay, so what we hoped to aim through that was to um, learn how we can answer this question that's going to come up in the exam. Okay, and hopefully in your review of your materials, you've been able to define things about withdrawal and defeat withdrawal and retreat, to categorise evidence um, and to be able to assess sources um, and evaluate their significance. So best of luck with your exam guys and I'll talk to you in the morning with another video. Thank you.